All right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to um, Wednesday night. It's Wellness Wednesday again. I hope everybody had a phenomenal Thanksgiving week last week. With all of the prep for the holiday week, we decided to um, cancel our live video. So we apologize if you didn't um, see it as you may have been looking for it and we were not on. Um, but this week, we have a very special guest, a dear friend of ours named Kitty. Kitty is a nurse, um, charge nurse at that in a local hospital out in Wisconsin, where today it's a high of 30 something degrees and she's quite comfortable compared to what it's been. And so we are happy to have her join us tonight. Um, as a recap, the last several weeks, we have been talking about um, surviving the holiday seasons, uh, season and how um, giving you some tips from things of um, who you surround yourself with and nutrition and how do you stay active. And today we're gonna to be talking a lot about the mindset um, behind the holiday season. And so with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Walt. Good evening and uh, thanks to everybody for joining tonight. Kitty, it's an honor to have you uh, joining us tonight. Before we talk a little bit about all those credentials that um, Sharon Sharon articulated so well, how are those Packer fans surviving without Aaron Rodgers this year? I mean, is that fair game or um, fan, not a fan? Um, I think it's just a, it's a rebuilding season. You know, our expectations are a little lower than in previous years. And we're just seeing where um, Mr. Love takes us. <laughs> Got to feel the love, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about the holidays. Lots of things happen, you know, in the next four or five weeks. And obviously Thanksgiving, the big turkey day just went by. Um, as we get into it, you know, we think about all the stressors that we have. Ladies, you know, when you, you know, probably may have more stressors than me, the guy, um, I tend to be the garbage disposal on the holidays, I find. Um, but what are you, what are your biggest stressors um, as, as you prepare the holidays, families for the holidays? What are some of the stressors that you guys face? Kitty, you're the new person in the block. How about we let you lead us off? Of course. Well, thanks so much for asking me to join in tonight. I'm honored to to join in and share a little bit um, of insight on prep for the holidays. So what causes stress? Oh, I can think of a few things. Um, <clears throat> for one, just trying to juggle everything. I think our day-to-day -day weeks are so bogged down with, I mean, well, I guess it depends on stages of life, right? I'm in the midst of um, kids who are uh, in fourth grade and sixth grade. So we have all the activities. It's you know, this sport, that sport, um, this Christmas concert, a band production, a choir thing, um, a play, you know, there's all these things. Just, so just trying to juggle that and then throw in holidays. And how do you get everyone here and organize everyone in this family and make everybody happy, right? Trying to make everybody else happy. <laughs> and I think we lose ourselves in that a lot of the time. You know, we don't even realize the amount of stress that we have um, until you, well, I've found anyway that I don't feel stressed until I start telling somebody, what did I do today? <laughs> well, you know, I a drove recap. here, took a child here. Yeah. And it's like, wow, I can't even keep up with that. How did I process and actually complete all of those things and yet still try to keep my head on straight, still try to make healthier choices? Um, you know, still make time for exercise or trying to um, make a semi-healthy dinner for everybody. Um, you know, like there's a lot of things we have to, I think, just sometimes just step back and give yourself grace that you made it through the day and that's okay too. And sometimes just having that lower expectation of what to expect for the next few days, weeks, months, depending on where we are, let's hope it doesn't go much more longer than a month. <laughs> I don't think I can handle that much stress for that long of a time frame. But so I think just um, acknowledging that there is stress there and trying to lower those expectations. And maybe we can dive into that a little bit, um, you know, later on too with different strategies. But that's, um, I guess, one of the areas of stress that I've noted 
thus far. Paige, Sharon, any thoughts on that? Want to go? Do you want me to go first? I can go. I, so I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum from Kitty. So like I lived that life of driving the kid around, going to all the different activities, going to the plates, doing all that. So we don't have that anymore. So he's launched. He's off at college and it's now what, right? So now I have all this extra time on my hands where I could get into trouble and old Paige would have gotten into trouble and would have sat around and maybe mindless eating in front of the TV. So now I have to find things to, and healthy ways to deal with work stress and put into those holes, those voids. Whereas before it was, I didn't have time because I was running and taking him places. Now I have the time where I could make poor choices. So now I have to find other ways to, to fill that spot. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll add to that, that, you know, the, I'm an empty nester now with the three kids off in college. And for me, that time blocking, you know, there is so much to do, even for people without kids in the house. Um, but how do you, how do you plan on prioritizing what's important to you and making it for me, for example, is the exercise, you know, it was a really cold day here, not as cold as Wisconsin. Um, and I made it a point to get a break and run well, walk really quickly to get my two miles in because it's important to me. And I, I had to delegate that time. And so whether it's making choices to eat right, to hydrate, to sleep, um, to get things done, um, to move your body, like that's something that I know I can slip into bad habits and not do things and just sit because it's comfortable. But this is the season when we want to be really purposefully doing things with life. We want to be intentional with those things that are important to us. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, that's kind of what I heard. Um, so when you think about a strategy or a tactic or something that we could, you know, kind of hand off as a uh, way of maybe taking that moment, any thoughts on what that, that might sound like to somebody who's, um, you know, got a lot on their plate, like Kitty, what would be some of the things you might, you might put out there as uh, like, an, what do you do to catch yourself um, in the moment, aside from just going along? Uh, yeah, right. That's a great question. <laughs> um, I think it's a, an always a moving target. Um, my strategy has been, I try to utilize um, a calendar where I keep everything in one place. So my schedule, the kids' schedule, um, whatever, all, everything lives in one place. And on Sunday, I look at that calendar and mentally take note of the days that I need to be places or whether there's appointments or you know late nights, what have you, make as many arrangements as I can on Sunday for where the kids will be or where I need to be or people I need to you know get in contact with. Um, so that I can have an idea of where I can fit in all of the other things, um, like the exercise, or um, I'm doing, I'm currently doing a, a strength training program that only requires three days a week, but sometimes trying to figure out which three days am I going to be able to dedicate an hour and will I do that at home or will I go to the gym? based on where I'm at. So like getting down to some of those like nitty gritty details of like, I have an hour here, so I'll go here and I'll do it at the gym versus home or whatever. Um, and just being really intentional with trying to stick with that schedule. Um, and sometimes it's day by day, <laughs> you know, maybe I can't look ahead to Thursday on Sunday, but on Monday, I can make sure that I have a plan. Um, and if things don't go, the way that I anticipate, that's okay. I get to try again Tuesday <laughs> and then again, <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> There's always one more day to continue to, to try to wrap your head around it. So it's fair to say that your ultimate goal is to win every day, win one day at a time. Right. Cool. Paige, go in the same order. What do I do? I, I, you know, I try and plan. I, if I run a day, then I know I'm walking the next day. If I, now I'll be honest with you, 
The past two mornings have been entirely too cold at five o'clock in the morning to go out and do anything. Um, you know, it's bad when we have one dog, Dory, who sticks her nose out and goes, uh, uh I'm not going out. Like, you know, it's, it's cold. Um, so <laughs> I was fortunate today that I was on the floor in some respects, because I did get my 10,000 steps running my butt off at work today. Um, so I, I, I set my goal for every day as to what I want to achieve for myself because I want to be what I want to be. And so I always have that in the back of my mind. Cool. Sherry? You know, I think the, the calendar and planning ahead is great. I think I, I heard more of what do you do when you're faced with something that you didn't expect? Um, That's where it might be my next question. And, and so I, I, I hear like, great, I have an, an intent to have a calendar with what I have to do, but it's too cold or you get bored or you're lonely. We've talked about the feeling of being blasted in the past, right? Like, so we have this thing we, we coach through, which is called stop, challenge and choose. Um, and it's, it's a purposeful stop, right? There's a feeling you might have. There's just a frustration. You might find yourself going somewhere and you're, you're not aware, like when Kitty's like, how did I get from point A to point B? It's all on autopilot. So if we stop for that moment and say, what it, what's happening? What's going on? What, what do I really want? What am I working towards? Like we, we are always looking at our goals. Um, you know, is rummaging through the pantry smart because I'm pissed off at my job today? Is it because I'm bored and I don't want to finish or you know, something broke in the house. Like what are the things that are throwing us off our plan and what can you do? And it's, we stop, challenge the thought, challenge the feeling, recognize where it's coming from and then make a choice that hopefully leads us to something that gives us better health or a better outcome in that mindset. Like I'm going to choose to do this and I'm going to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just kind of think that that's kind of the next evolution of our topic here tonight is because one of the things that seems to always happen in the holidays is that either if you have young children, you have multiple events in the same evening, and you have to decide how to how to accommodate um, or you could be um, in a scenario to where there's a lot of pressure to host events or go to events in the same day in the same time and people have to come up with that way of making a choice um, any thoughts on you know techniques I know we talked about stop challenge and choose but um, any other thoughts around conflicting events um, st strategies around nutrition when you know maybe there's three events in the same day um, or pressure from friends or family to host events um, like at the last minute that might come up. And, you know, I don't mean to segue away just always talking about events, but, you know, what about the stress of all the shopping that, you know, quote unquote, gets done during the season and fitting that into your day um, and and thinking about your health and self-care plan and those in that hustle and bustle. So, few things thrown out there on the board. Anybody want to take one? I could go a lot of places. With... <laughs> You're our special guest. So uh, it was a broad first. brush I stroked that with. <laughs> uh, for one about with it, events, um, a friend of mine um, and myself just did, I just had a, a lengthy conversation about this exact thing in regard to mindset around the holidays. And um, looking at surroundings from a um, like a physical space in regard to events versus, you know, just your surroundings of, you know, your friends and family or your pantry or your kitchen or what have you. Um, and really wanting to empower people to look at, you know, look at the things this season throughout the holidays. Like what are the, the traditions, the people, um, you know, those things that you want to do that bring you joy. And what are the things that you find yourself doing just out of pure obligation and do more of the things that actually bring you joy and say no to the things that you're doing just out of obligation. So maybe all of the school events, do you really need to volunteer for all of them? Do you need to, you know, bring, have your child bring something for everything? 
No, even though my kids think that's what we need to do. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it's a prepackaged snack and that's okay. I don't need to make something homemade. Or, you know, if it's a family event and, um, you know, nobody's compromising as to when to have it, or you can't find a time that everyone can, you know, accommodate and be there. I get that wanting to be around family um, is the majority of what most of us tend to do, but maybe there's family that doesn't bring you joy. And it's okay to limit and have some boundaries um, around the exposure that you have to those events too. I mean, you can put some boundaries on that. Your mental health is important um, one way or another. So do more of what you actually find joy in doing. Yeah. And and I think that the other thing that sometimes, you know, I know I recently had this conversation with somebody as well. Um, sometimes the power of the word no. I mean, sometimes when asked to do something or participate in something, particularly last minute comes to mind in, in my world is um, the power to say no. And, and sometimes it's a very powerful feeling to be able to do that. Uh, and it can be very emotional and distressful. Um, if it's hard and, uh, you know, but it's okay to do that. Yeah. Saying no to those things allows you to say yes to, to the things that you do want to do. So right. say yes the things that bring you joy as you very well articulated. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was what I was looking for. And I knew you were going to say it, but say yes to you. And that sometimes means saying no to others. Um, and it can be done respectfully. All right. I think, hey, this was a great conversation, ladies. Um, Sharon, I guess you know, if you want to close it out, I know we're kind of bad at our mark for uh, our Wednesday weekly. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm going to say thank you to Kitty. And I'll certainly ask you if you have any last minute thoughts that you want to share or share a little bit about your own kind of personal story of your journey. You may absolutely do that if you'd like. Um, but we just, we love having new people come on and join us and, and just share, you know, real life experiences. Um, you know, we all have the same struggles. We just have more tools in our pocket, um, in order to embrace those and to move forward and still prioritize our health. And that's what this is all about. This, this whole segment in the holidays is really about prioritizing your self-care, um, which is not selfish. Um, and so more yes days to yourself. Um, but, uh, again, Kitty, thank you. Do you have any final thoughts that you want to close with? I could say a lot of things, but I think, um, you know, just like you said, say yes to you, um, taking care of yourself during the holidays allows you to be more present. Um, we know that being around lots of people during the holidays can sometimes bog us down and we spread lots of sickies around as Paige is noting, I'm sure at work with all of the kiddos that were hanging out on Thanksgiving, probably sharing germs and such. So when we're prioritizing our health and prioritizing those decisions that, um, you know, align with that, getting enough sleep and staying hydrated and feeling our bodies well and moving our bodies, like those are all things that are going to help us to build up that, um, that immune response, so to speak. So take care of you so that by the time Christmas, Hanukkah, all of the things roll around that you're able to participate freely and not from the quarantine of your home. We don't need to do that. True. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you again, Kitty. Thanks, Walton Page. And hopefully this was helpful to you and we'll be back next week. Have a great night. <laughs>